Hello and welcome to the Fighting Spirit Podcast. As always, I'm Jason and I'm here to bring us the retrospective for UFC 255, Figueredo versus Perez, where Figueredo did retain his title and Shevchenko did as well. And we'll be looking ahead to Blades versus Lewis. Let's just talk quickly about UFC 255 though. We went 5-7, and seven, not great overall, that's about 42% accuracy. However, silver lining, we went three and four on the Patreon picks. So our best, most high probability picks landed us in the money. That's where we always want to be. And the rest of the cards didn't quite work out. But there were some fights on there that were a little questionable from a statistics standpoint. Looking forward, we got a lot of statistically questionable fights uh, for Blaze versus Lewis. But we came out on top for the ones that we thought were the best ones to pick. And those are the fights that really matter. And if you want those, you head on over to Patreon in the description box below and you'll get my best probability fights. Also, another thing, in full transparency, I did not buy UFC 255. I did not think it was a good enough value. I didn't end up purchasing it, so I'll be talking about the card to the best of my ability, uh, but mostly just going over the picks, what we got right, what we got wrong. Without further ado, though, let's get into it. Here's the show. All right, so let's kick things off with the main event here. We had Devinson Figueroa defeat Alex Perez very early on into round number one. Perez, from what I saw, looked good out of the shoot. There's a little kind of streamable you can catch on Reddit somewhere. Uh, where you can basically watch the fight. And uh, you know, Perez looked okay to start. He was, you know, going for that takedown and then through an amazing grappling transition. Figueredo reverses uh, every bit of momentum that Perez has going for him. Locks in that really high guillotine that uh, one of my buddies who's a uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, uh, he thought it was a little high, didn't think it was going to sink it in, uh, but he did pull it off, uh, just really, really skillful grappling out of Figueredo uh, to pick up the win here and retain his title, and kind of the story of the night here is that he's right back to it because uh, UFC 256, he is going to retain his title, he's going to stay in Las Vegas, and he's going to be fighting Brandon Moreno, who won earlier on the card, uh, we'll talk about that fight a little bit later, kind of a weird circumstance with that one. Uh, but anyways, uh, Figueredo is your champion still. Uh, he's probably going to hold on to it for a while, I think, given the talent out there at 125. He certainly seems like a cut above the rest, but we'll see how things play out for him. Uh, we'll be calling his Brandon Moreno fight very soon, so keep posted for that one. Moving on to the next one, Valentina Shevchenko defeats Jennifer Maya. So Jennifer Maya, I think, exposed some of the lack of wrestling uh, that we, you know, that Shevchenko just hasn't had to really deal with, which he will have to if she ends up facing Andrade. Uh, however, um, you know, she looked really good for the time that she had. She was in top position against Shevchenko, exposing, I think, some small holes in the game. But ultimately, Shevchenko's striking is just so much better. Her takedowns were still there. She was still able to utilize her solid grappling to get into good positions, but Maya did have moments where you thought that maybe, you know, Maya could have pulled it out. In fact, I think Shevchenko in live betting went to a mi- from like a minus 1800 2000 situation to minus 300 during that round where Maya was on top. And I'm not, I I didn't personally watch the fight, so I don't know how much control she had, how really close she was to closing the door. I didn't see much from the highlights that made me think that. Uh, but either way, some people thought that maybe Shevchenko could have pulled it off. Uh, overall numbers, though, I struck her 2-1 to one and takedowns 5 versus 1. So even though Maya exposed maybe a couple holes in Shevchenko's game, Shevchenko was still able to dominate this fight. She was still able to come out on top and pick up a great victory. Now, will she be able to do that same sort of thing against an Andrade? I don't know. Uh, after her last performance against uh, Shikagian, you know, it could be her coming up next, especially being a former champion herself. That's a solid fight to sell. So we'll see how things play out here, but Shevchenko is still your champion, and I think will be for a long, long while. Uh, however, that Andrade fight is a little bit questionable, but hey, as always, we got to see how it plays out, but it is one we also got correct. Oh uh, yeah, that's another thing too. We did a solid towards the end of this card here, three in a row, Figueredo, Shevchenko, and Means. Uh, is a little preview to the next one, uh, but then it just kind of horrible down the middle of the card overall, except for our other Patreon pick, which was Shevchenko's sister. Uh, so, hey, a couple of bright spots in there, and like I said, the Patreons worked out for us for the most part, but uh, overall, not a great card. Anyways, moving on to the next one. Tim Means defeats Mike Perry, one we did call correct. Uh, Mike Perry, between not making weight, all the shit he talked on Twitter about eating junk food leading up to the weigh-ins, um, the way he performed, I mean, he did almost shut the door on, uh, Tim Means very early on in round one. He did almost have the rear naked choke, but after that, it was really all Means. Um, I think Perry kind of tired himself, that, tired himself out at that point. 
I think that Perry striking looked a little bit uh, fatigued, honestly, later on in you know start end of round three from what I saw and uh, means I struck him two to one and uh, just looked all the better I think if Perry was taking it seriously training at a real camp didn't have these issues going on outside the octagon he would have performed a lot better however he has all this bullshit going on in his life and I think it's holding him back Mike Perry is a guy that can perform at a high level in the UFC but he has got to get his act together outside of the octagon and that is the only way he's going to be able to perform against top talent veterans like Tim Mean, it's out there. The guy wants to just hang around and, you know, fight the dregs of the UFC for as long as Dana White wants to keep him on contract. That's fine. You'll get paydays, yada, yada. I'm sure, you know, he'll be happy. But if he actually wants to make, you know, any kind of real claim in this sport, fight for a title, be a guy that can get big paychecks, guy that can make it into a real long lasting career, he's got to get his shit together. And, uh, you know, for a guy that is talented, has raw talent like he does, it's something I would like to see out of him because it's a little disappointing to watch Mike Perry not make weight, talk so much shit, have all the domestic violence things, uh, the beating of people in restaurants, you know, they basically the assault charges. It's a lot of bullshit around Mike Perry right now where I'm just not the biggest fan of his, and I think he needs to pull it together. Somebody needs to get in touch with this guy, needs to take him out of Florida, bring him to a new camp, and, you know, Faraz Ahabi, give the guy a call, get his visa worked out, get him up to uh, Canada. Do something for this guy, somebody out there. Um, then again, you know, he's the only guy that can help himself. So, you know, I'm sure there's offers out there for him. And, hey, we'll see what it is, uh, see what happens with him. But uh, I think Mike Perry's career is going to come to a screeching halt very soon if he stays in this track. And, and that just is what it is. All right, next one here. Caitlin Chikagin does defeat Cynthia Calvillo. Uh, I picked Calvillo in this one. She did score the takedown, uh, but ultimately she was just outstruck. Um, she wasn't able to get inside on Chikagin very well. Fought too much at range, from what I understand, and Chikagin ended up taking this one away. Solid performance by her. Good bounce back after the lost Andraj. Uh, so nothing, uh, you know, I can't say anything too bad about her there. Uh, the next one here, we did actually get correct. Paul Craig defeats Mauricio Hua, knocks him out in kind of middle or late side of uh, round number two. Uh, Craig was scoring takedowns at four to Mauricio Hua zero, draining the gas tank, and ultimately was able to shut the door. And so hats off to Paul Craig. Always love seeing the Bear Jew out there. Great fighter, and I'm looking to see more out of him as he just beat a uh, really hot veteran because uh, Hua did look good in his last outing. Uh, moving on to the next one, Brendan Moreno defeats Brendan Royval. So in this one, we did call Royval, but uh, it's kind of some weird sort of circumstance. His shoulder, Royval's shoulder, gets popped out during the fight. They pop it in uh, after the fight's over, after the TKO, with one second left on the clock. And I'm pretty sure that had something to do with Moreno picking up the win here. If Royval's shoulder had stayed in place, maybe he would have picked up a win here. Maybe he could have fought it a little bit later. Uh, obviously, Moreno did score the two takedowns, but from what I understand, it was fairly competitive. Otherwise, both guys landing around similar significant strikes uh so hey is what it is bad luck for Roy Val if he just lasts an extra second his coach would have popped his shoulder back in and then he would have been able to perform better uh but hey is what it is and he picks up an L but Moreno does get an opportunity now to fight for the title and so we'll see him in about another 30 days all right, one here I was not correct on. I thought the hype train was going to get derailed, but uh, Joaquin Buckley defeats Jordan Wright. Um, Wright looked okay, the undefeated uh, English or UK fighter. I think she might be from Wales. Uh, but either way, he uh, ends up getting defeated here. Uh, kind of outmatched uh, a lot. Knocked down twice, 43 to 18 strikes. Uh, Buckley does now seem to be like the real deal, uh, picking up that early knockdown in 18 seconds into round number two. So, you know, I mean, he's still got to fight better and better talent. Uh, but uh, after a great win against Kasang and I, now an undefeated fighter on right, I think he's ready to step up to the, you know, guys right underneath the top 15 or even fighting potentially a top 15 guy. I might be pushing him too soon, but he has two great stoppages, and so he's proving he can, I think, handle that kind of competition. So uh, we're going to see some great things out of Buckley, I think, coming up, and uh, I'm on the hype train now too for what it's worth. I think this guy might be the real deal, uh, so we'll see how things play out for him. And uh, another one we did get correct. Also, Wright was our other Patreon pick. We had gone with Antonio Shevchenko, which we're about to talk about here in a second. We got that one right. Tim Means, who's an underdog. Valentina Shevchenko, just a crazy uh, favorite in that one. And then just to kind of round things out with another underdog, I went with Jordan Wright. We got that one wrong. So, like I said, three out of four. Got an underdog, got a near eve, even fighter in Shev uh, Antonia Antonina Shevchenko. So, not too bad overall as far as those 
uh, Patreon picks are concerned. Uh, but yeah, uh, Shevchenko picks up a solid win over Lipsky, gets a knockout uh, late in round number two. Uh, Lipsky just, uh, if I understand, did not uh, look all that competent. Uh, and so Shevchenko ends up picking up performance of the night money. Uh, she was just handily, handily outstruck. And then uh, just kind of a rough one for the rest of this. We lost uh, all four of these in a row. Uh, Dalmi uh, defeats Rodriguez. Now, I didn't see these, unfortunately, so I'll just kind of run them down. We didn't get any of them right. Nicholas Dev- Dev- that Dalby defeats uh, Daniel Rodriguez. Now, he was outstruck 83-50, to 50, uh, but I have to assume the damage was better out of Dalby, so he ended up picking up the win. Joe Bond defeats Jerry Gooden. Uh, Gooden had, did have a solid uh, takedown uh, in the round. Uh, but uh, honestly, he was just outstruck too handily, and so Joban picks up a solid win over Gooden. Uh, the Kyle Dockhouse defeats Dustin Stolfus. We had Stolfus in that one, picks up an L, and then the last one, uh, Louis uh, Kose is defeated by Sasha Palinikov. So like I said, we went 5-7 and seven overall, not the greatest numbers, obviously better towards the top of the card. Bottom of the card was a real crapshoot. Uh, we just did not do well up until Antonina showed up, and then he, we started firing all cylinders, at least with the Patreon. Uh, up until we uh, got that Buckley uh, win against Wright, which you know, hey, three out of four, very solid, um, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not disappointed in that performance at all because it still lands you in the money. That is the most important thing when we put those Patreon picks out. Obviously, we want to get as many right as possible, uh, but the Patreon picks are the ones I kind of hang my hat on these days, and those are the ones we have to get correct. All right, we got to look forward though. We can't look back at this one. It's the great thing about this show. We got a great feedback loop. We're going on to the next one. Let's talk about Blade versus Lewis. All right, so we're going to kick things off with our main event. We have Curtis Razorblades taking on Derek the Black Beast Lewis. And in this one here, i got to be honest, I love the Black Beast. He's got great power, but what does he not have? And that is great takedown defense, and that is what Curtis Razorblades rest his entire career on now with the exception of the francis and ganu losses here i mean this guy honestly has been taking everybody down and ground and pounding them to nothing i uh, didn't quite do it to volkov that fight did go the distance but he still did keep him on his back for most of it junior dos santos aberdikamov justin willis all these guys he's basically been able just to put on their backs and take down now when i look back in Derek Lewis's career, he had a lot of problems with guys that had big takedown game, like Daniel Cormier. Kept his power away, took him down, and honestly, that's what you're going to get out of Razor Blades. So I honestly expect him to get a win here. Nothing against Derek Lewis. I think that he could potentially, you know, have power to knock Blades out. It is possible. However, I don't see it happening. It's a low percentage chance, and all of the, I think the odds go towards Blades in this one because he has the ability to dictate the fight, to take the biggest weapon away from Lewis and pick up a win here. Now, it's not to say Lewis isn't three, uh, you know, three and oh in his last three. He's gotten some great wins, Ivanov, Latifi, and Olenek, but Blades is the biggest takedown threat out of all these guys, and honestly, I see him getting it done. So we're going to go with Curtis Razor Blades in the main event. All right, in the next one here, we're going to have Anthony Lionheart Smith coming back to take on Devin the Brown Bear Clark. And this one here, it's been some rough losses here for Smith. Ever since he fought John Jones, which he could have actually won because of the illegal strike by Jones, but he ended up losing it, taking it like a man, came back to Gustafson, and then had two pretty bad losses to Teixeira and Rakic back-to-back. And we look over at Devin Clark. He has solid wins against Menafield and Daquan Townsend. And this one here, because of the kind of slide we've seen out of Smith and the sort of trajectory we're looking at Clark, I'm going with Devin Clark in this one. I think he's the smarter of the two picks. Clark has some very good hands, some very good striking output, and excellent takedowns. We rarely see Smith go for takedowns. He does have some submission game, but his takedowns aren't really there. He doesn't really have the best takedown defense coming in at just 51 percent and we know that Devin Clark is scoring them with pretty decent well maybe not the highest accuracy uh, but he's going for them a lot and he is getting them he's trained over at Jackson Wink he has a lot of good things going for him in addition to his two most recent solid decision victories here I think that he is going to end up defeating Anthony Smith who seems to be on the decline right now Uh, we'll see how things play out but honestly I'm going with Devin the Brown Bear Clark all right, this next one here is one of those we don't have too much information to go off of. We have Joseph Maines Mayhem taking on Luke Sanders. So Luke Sanders has a pretty good career in the UFC. But uh, for Joe here, we don't have too much to go off. 
For Joe, we only have his one win in the UFC against Johnny Munoz back a few weeks ago, back on August 1st. And so for the information we have, we are going to go with Luke Sanders, who has looked pretty decent. He got defeat over Burrell in his last outing. Um, he has struggled at times, though. Lost to Haniyaya, lost to Sukumtot. But I think, honestly, cool hand Luke here will be able to come out on top. Uh, he struggled ever since he's gotten into the UFC, really, though. Um, you know, back leading in, coming out of RFA, small organizations. He was on a tear, but he has yet to find that secret sauce. But I think he's going to be riding high after this win over Barrow. And honestly, there isn't enough for me to say out of mains to really counter uh, counteract that right now um, with Mains coming in with, you know, solid, you know, background in the regional scene and then his great outing against Johnny Munoz. So just not enough information, but I like Sanders here. I think he's capable of getting it done. He's got good knockout power. We have seen Mains knocked out in the past. So I'm going to stick with cool hand Luke Sanders. All right, next one here, we're going to have Zalgas Zumalagov. <laughs> Zumgalov. Zoom Taking on Amir Albazi. Uh, and I'm going to go with Albazi in this one. He looked really solid against his win over Malcolm Gordon, coming in at just 13 and 1, 27 year old guy. Um, now we look over at Zugov, though. He kind of, I wouldn't say struggled, but he, he couldn't, he hasn't shut the door since 2017 out in the regional circuit. He came to the UFC, four straight decision wins, one of them being a split, and lost to Rulon Piver in his opening UFC fight. So again, not a lot of information, but Albazi looked really good in his outing not as uh, good for Zulgas against Paiva and so in this one here I'm going to stick with Albazi the Prince I think he's in his prime at 27 years old and he is going to get it done on Saturday all right the next one here we're going to have Martin Day taking on Anderson Dos Santos and in this one here I like the Spartan Martin Day he's an Hawaiian fighter coming in now he has struggled a bit uh, he had split decision loss to Ping Yong Lu and he uh, decisive loss be a, be a knockout uh, to Davy Grant. Now for Dos Santos, he's had similar struggles, right? Back-to-back decision losses. Nad Namari lost to Andre Wool. So it's which one of these guys are going to pull out of this funk first? And out of what we've seen here, I like the younger Martin Day. Now he's still 32 years of age, a little bit green, whereas Dos Santos is 20 and 8. He certainly has a lot more uh, experience to him. He has great submissions with 11 over his 20 wins. But I'm going to go with Day here. I think I, I think that, honestly, he's just going to be able to get it done as the younger, fresher talent. Uh, honestly, really tough one to decide on here. This is not a statistic special. I just like Day here a bit more. He's going to be the call. All right, and this next one here, we had a replacement. We have uh, Sean Woodson pulling out and being replaced by Kai Kamaka to be taking on Jonathan Pierce. And in this one here, I do like Pierce just a little bit more. Obviously, he doesn't have you know the late or, or, you know late replacement. Uh, he's been training for this one the entire way, so obviously I like that one about him. Uh, I also like how he's performed. Now, he did suffer a loss to Joe Lozon, but that was a guy with a ton of experience in the tank. I think he was just overwhelmed by uh, Lozon, and uh, honestly... Uh, I think he could bounce back in this one. He looked really good in his Dana White Contender Series fights, had great knockouts, even fought in Bellator. I think he just ran into a veteran with something to prove uh, and, you know, got derailed in that one. Uh, Kamaka has also looked solid, though. One win in the UFC, great wins coming in out of Bellator and LFA, uh, but all decisions, not really shutting the door. So I'm going to go with the higher fight IQ here, the guy with the bigger power in the hands. I'm going to stick with Pierce in this one. Trains at MMA Lab, solid fight gym. I think he, you know, just... Ran to a guy just too soon in Lozon, and honestly, I think he can get it done going forward here. So we're going to take Jonathan J.S.P. Pierce to pick up a win in this contest. All right, this next one here, we're going to have Carmel Thunder himself. Great fight name. Miguel Baeza taking on Takashi Tensato. And in this one here, I'm going to stick with Baeza. The guy has been on a just crazy win streak, a 9-0. and uh, Great wins in the UFC, back-to-back TKOs. Hector Aldana, Matt Brown. I mean, to beat the immortal Brett, Matt Brown by knocking him out, that's got to mean something out there, right? And then we have the... Takashi Sato, who is off and on. You know, he's got some solid wins against guys like Jason Witt, Ben Saunders, but he did take a loss to Bilal Muhammad. And I'm going to go with the guy in the hot streak here, a guy that beat the immortal Matt Brown. It's tough to look against that. It's tough to look against the stats. I think, honestly, Baez has a solid prospect here, and he's going to surprise us all by beating a good, solid veteran in Takashi Sato. Miguel Baez is the pick in this one. 
All right, next one here is going to have Sue Majeri taking on Malcolm X. Gordon. And in this one here, I like our Chinese fighter, Sue Majeri, a bit more. He's the Tibetan Eagle, and he looked amazing against Andre Sukumtot, dominating him through the course of three rounds. Now, he hit some other losses, like the Luis Smoka. Uh, and we look over at Gordon, though. He's had similar struggles, came into the UFC, lost immediately to Albazi, and I think that he's going to struggle here to pick up another win. I think Majeri is looking solid right now. I think he has the statistics to back it up as well with just his two wins or sorry two fights in the UFC has great striking output at over five per 50 or per minute over five strikes landed per minute uh, some really solid takedown defense good submission averages and I know the statistics don't like the best right now with that one fight for Gordon uh, but we've seen Sue fight so well thus far in the UFC that we're going to stick with him he's going to be the pick in this contest all right, next one here, we're going to have Josh Parisian taking on Parker Porter. And in this one here, I am going with... All right, the next one here is basically a debut. Um, I'm just going to include it here in the list instead of dropping it in the bottom. We have Josh Parisian taking on Parker Porter. In this one, I like Parisian. He's got a little more experience, even though he doesn't have any UFC fights yet. He's coming off of, let's see, one, two, three, six knockout wins in a row, including one of the Dana White Contender Series. Most of them coming on early first round, mid first round, late second round, and Parker Porter, who just was knocked out by Chris Dockhouse back on August 15th. I think that's too quick of a turnaround after a knockout. I think that Parisian has everything going for him in this one. I think he can pick up a win. Solid power in his hands. Uh, good streak, good bit of confidence coming in. Good 31 years of age to Parker's 35. I think, honestly, everything points in this direction. I think the smart money is on Josh Parisian in his debut. All right, we got a couple of women on the fight on the fight card. This is going to be the first set. Ashley Evan Smith take on uh, Norma Dumont Viana, and in this one here, I do like. Evan Smith just a little bit more in this one. The Rebel Girl is taking on somebody very green at just 4-1 in the Immortal uh, Viana, who did pick up a loss to Megan Anderson in her debut. She was knocked out right away. Uh, now, we've also seen struggles, honestly, out of Evan Smith. So this is a tough one to call. She lost Andrea Lee, Sarah Morris, and Ketlin Vieira. Did pick up a win over Beck Rollins, uh, but has struggled and hasn't fought in quite some time. Her last fight was February 17, 2019. Uh, whereas Dumont at least fought back uh, at least this year, February 29, 2020. Uh, now, it was a loss. Both fighters, like, fairly green, like I said. Even Evan Smith, this is only her 11th fight. Um, really tough to say uh, who can get this one done. But honestly, I'm going sp- to I'm gonna stick with Ashley Evan Smith here. I think she can get it done. She's the pick. All right, just two more fights here. Uh, first one's going to be Bill Algio taking on Spike, the Alpha Ginger Carlisle. And in this one here, I do like Algio just a little bit more. He uh, did take a tough loss to Ricardo Lamas, but that guy's a phenomenal, phenomenal fighter. I think it was too much too soon for him coming in. You know, Spike Lar- Carlisle struggled in his Billy Quatnero fight. Um, I don't know. Both these guys are, you know, coming off of losses here. Um, both fairly green, a little bit more experience out of Bill Algeo. That's what I'm kind of hanging my hat on here. I think that he has a little bit better stats for what we've seen as well. Uh, looking at them here, let's pull them up real quick. We can see that Algeo, just with his two fights, has had amazing striking output. He's getting hit a lot, but he's hit getting uh, a lot of shots in there. His takedown defense at 57% isn't too bad. Spike Carlisle does rely on the takedowns uh, in his game, and so I think it could become a factor here. As long as Algeo can stop the takedowns and stop the aggression of the Alpha Ginger right away, I think that he can win this fight uh, over the long term. But we'll see how things play out on Saturday. Ultimately, Bill Algeo is the pick. And then the last one here, we have Rachel Ostevich taking on Gina Manzani. So Ostevich, a dimey dime, if there ever was one, of course. I don't know if she can fight uh, with just four and five. She's uh, got a losing record in the in MMA overall. But, hey, she's on the card. And in this one, I think she actually can get a win over Manzani, who has struggled a bit. She does have better training, I think, at Extreme Couture. But she hasn't had a win uh, except, uh, you know, one out of her last three yeah, sorry, one of her last four against Valerie Barney uh, back outside of the UFC. So she was in the UFC, she went out of it, she's back out, you know, she's been in and out of the UFC. Uh, honestly, uh, I think Osovich can get this win here. She kind of needs one, losses to Montana De La Rosa, lost to Paige Van Zandt. Her last win was the Ultimate Fighter finale back in 2017. Just, just keep that in mind. Her last win was in 2017 on the Ultimate Fighter finale. Before that, it was some Invicta fighting. Hit and miss. Um, honestly, Ostevich, not the greatest fighter in the world, uh, but she's fun to look at. I won't deny that. And uh, I'm going to go with her anyways because uh, the numbers do shake out for her. It's not, a, uh, it's not any, uh, any other motivation than that. 
uh, the numbers pay, uh, shake out for us, so we're going to go with Ostevich. All right, let's go over them one more time. We have Blades, Clark, Parisian. Also, these are in a different order. Uh, Blades, Clark, Parisian, Albazi, Baeza, Algeo, Evan Smith, Day, Ostevich, Pierce, uh, Mujerjiri, uh, Sue, uh, Sue, our Chinese fighter from earlier, and Sanders to round things out. So, like I said, Last week, we kind of killed it on the Patreon. We landed the money. It's what we always strive to do. We're going to try to do that again this week. I don't know how the picks are going to be overall. It might even be hard to get those high probability numbers out there because the stats are so low, but I'll still try to get the best ones out to you on Patreon. And if you'd like to join that, head on over to the description box below and go ahead and support the show at a dollar amount that makes the most sense to you. Also, I haven't said anything about this in a while, but please, you know, tell your friends, subscribe, uh, share the YouTube page, share the podcast, let people know that you're listening here. I do appreciate it. Uh, you know, the show has been growing steadily. You know, we, we still have, we have more viewers when we started, more listeners than when we started. And I'm always happy to have the uh, show get out there to more people that uh, can enjoy it. Uh, so if you'd like to get in touch with me, write to me, fightingspiritpodcast at gmail.com. You also can get in touch with me at Twitter on at MMAFightPick01. And then, of course, there's the Facebook page and the YouTube comments and everything else. Feel free to get in touch with me any way that you see fit. And then there's the Patreon, like I mentioned before. So looking forward, we have some good fights out there. Uh, some cards are coming together that are looking really, really good to close the year out. Uh, so we have Hermanson versus Holland on December 5th. Uh, that one's still coming together. Uh, so just really the main event for that one. Then we have Edwards versus Chamayev. Let's talk about this one. This one's unreal. Uh, this should be a pay-per-view, if I can be perfectly honest. Steven Thompson. So we got Wonder Boy taking on Jeff Neal. Amazing fight. Marcin Tybura, Greg Hardy. Good fight because Marcin Tybura is a good challenge for Greg Hardy. So I, I do like that one. Marlon Moraes versus Rob Font. That's an amazing fight. Misha Serkinov, Ryan Spann. Solid fight. Jose Aldo, Marlon Vera. Marlo Chito Vera versus Jose Aldo. That's a killer fight. Uh, Michelle Pereira versus Chaos Williams. Again, amazing fight. That that should be just dynamite explosive. Uh, Pintoja and Cape. All right, not too bad there. Uh, Bala Muhammad, Diego Lima. Awesome fight. Duran Wynn, Antonio Royo, good fight. So, Chart Eubanks, Panini Kinzad. Okay, not bad. Uh, let's see, we'll skip that one. Okay, and then the rest of the fight just kind of falls off from there. But that's an awesome card. I mean, this this card is stacked in addition to, of course, Kamza Chamayev and Leon Edwards. Watch the UFC on December 5th. That one is as good as a pay-per-view without any titles on it. Just keep that in mind. And then a fight night the following week. We're going to have Max Holloway taking on Calvin Cater. Okay, so that's taking place on the on uh, December 19th. Sorry, January 16th. And then there's still the UFC 256 card. Actually, I just skipped the UFC 256 card. Uh, so the Hamza fight is going to be on the 19th. Uh, then we're on the 12th of UFC 256, which I skipped, which I think still needs a main event. But that one's starting to come together. I believe it's going to be Togan Ferguson and Charles Dobonk's Oliveira on that one. Some other fights getting announced. Uh, we've got some really good fights. And uh, even uh, Cyril Gain versus Junior Dos Santos. That's an amazing fight, too. There are some great fights coming up to close out the year. And then early on, January, we got McGregor versus Poirier, which is going to be phenomenal. I'm just looking forward to all these great fights. You know, we kind of got through... A uh, bit of an underwhelming one last week. We got kind of an underwhelming one this week, and then things pick up uh, right thereafter uh, with uh, Holly, Cater, Hermans, and Holland. I'm looking forward to all of them. And until I speak with you again next time, happy fight picking.